Okay, welcome everyone to another iKings Daily Report, and today's Daily Report topic is going to be about the World Selection GUI. Uh, please ignore the spaceships in the background, that's just something I was working on building in the, for the Stargate Chevron 7 client mod. Uh, anyways, yeah, <laughs> continuing on with the actual video topic, uh, as everything in this GUI has not been completed, I cannot give you a 100% accurate detail write-up on all the features, but what I can tell you is this GUI is 100% player interactive. The world selection interface displays a real-time display of the universe and the solar system that are accessible, as well as the planets that are accessible to you as the Doctor. There are three modes to this UI, the universe, the solar system, and the planets. Each of these are represented by a 3D icon that directly interacts with the world or solar system you are looking at. At first, you will have a limited amount of planets you are allowed to travel to. This is a result of the disease that affected the tardis huang particle containment matrix, the, which caused the TARDIS to crash in the opening cutscene animation of the DWCM. And one of the results of that is some of the TARDIS components were scattered throughout time and space. In this case, the components that were scattered happen to be the TARDIS memory, crystal uh, TARDIS memory database crystals. The consequences of that turn out to be that several of the planets being added into the DW7, DWCM have become unaccessible to the player. This means that planets you can access will have their icons lit up, and respectively, planets that you have de that have been deleted from the TARDIS memory matrix will have their icons dimmed. Now, don't get the wrong idea. There will still be plenty of uh, planets left in the database who, for people who don't uh, necessarily uh, care to participate in the story uh, initially. But, of course, in order to unlock new planets, you need to find the TARDIS memory crystals. Each planet will, of course, have their own set of features and characteristics and quirky things that you will love. In, uh, in the GUI, the World Selection GUI, there are many, many features that will not be apparent to you at first, including comets, spaceships on routes to their destination, and something that resembles a big ball with an eye that likes to scream space. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you will get that. Uh, yeah, To unlock new planets and new solar systems, you must find that... You must find that planet's TARDIS memory crystal. A single crystal can be found on every single planet. So I'm just going to stop talking now and show you what you really want to see, which is the port selection GUI, of course. So, yeah, I'm going to lower the mic down. Hopefully you can still hear me, and I think my bird's going insane over there. So, yeah, I apologize. Anyways, uh, yeah, now here we are in the world selection GUI. Now, let me go through basic uh, controls. So to zoom in... It's the uh, R button, right? And to zoom out, it's the F button. Uh, my parakeet's going to ruin the audio in this video. This is my fifth try at recording the audio in here. But yeah, so R to zoom in, F to zoom out, and E centers you. For, uh, yeah, anyways, you can see as I'm dragging along on the screen. Let's see. Every time I try it, right. It's going to, this bird's going to chirp every time I try to talk. <laughs> Anyways, oh, video ruined. And I tried so hard to make this a quality one. Anyways, yeah, let's click on the solar system. Now, there's only one solar system in this GUI currently. That's for testing purposes. And you can see it's Minecraftia in this solar system. Oop, I pressed E to exit. You press, you click to get into the solar system and E to get out to the universe screen. Now, as you can see, I'm going to click on Minecraftia, yeah. and you have your choice of three different options. Surface, Nether, or the End. Now, each planet will have their own set of options in this little menu here uh, that you can travel to. Now, it's not connected to the uh, Time Vortex as of yet, because this is still a testing version, remember? Anyways, in the final version, you will be able to click this and then click a separate button down at the bottom, which will take you into the time vortex where you have to navigate to get to where you're going. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for whoop, <laughs> pretty much it for that. As you can see, I'm gonna zoom out. You can see that around the edges there's these cloud type things, which are, if you look, animated. Which Yo Freak did a brilliant job on this. This, uh, yeah, Yo Freak did that. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. I'm looking at my bird. It's like rocking back and forth on one of its uh, toys. I'm trying to scroll around, uh, scroll around and try to find a comet or some other Easter egg for you, but that could take a while, so I'm probably not going to do that. Anyways, I'm going to try to show you one last thing. Uh, whoop. Yeah, I exited out of it. Of course I did. Uh, yeah, anyways, 
And you can see here, of course, there's only one planet in this. Hopefully, we'll populate this solar system with a couple of more planets related to Minecraft uh, and that sort of thing. Maybe Creeper Home Planet or who knows? I don't know. But that's we're not going to focus on that solar system too much as the other ones, which will be populated across the entire screen here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. I think I've rambled on long enough. I'm going to leave this video for you guys to... I, I don't know. Anyways, cue outro links now.